Today's topic is the worst decision in color psychology history. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to Waypan. I'm Cal. I'm Sunny. The Stormcast Eternal has two of the worst crimes in all of color psychology history and all of design history. However, we actually really like the Stormcast Eternal design once those two elements are fixed, and they are the blue and gold color scheme and the helmet design. Don't believe us? <laughs> Well, the internet has told me that I am infallible now. That I have proven my point and I should end the video here. You have no choice but to agree with this statement. Not convinced? Alright, we're going to split it into two categories. Colour psychology and design craft. Colour Color psychology. psychology. Color psychology is the art of portraying yourself in a certain way using colors. So it could be yourself, a product, it doesn't matter what it is. Using those colors evokes specific emotions. It's not a magic wand, but what it is, is you saying to people, this is how I would like you to take this. Color psychology can be split into two categories, cross-cultural and cultural. Cross-cultural is biological. So for example, red is the easiest color to see and yellow is the hardest color to see. Taking those two examples, red and yellow, red has very stable cross-cultural meanings. Whereas yellow has far less stable cross-cultural meanings and has far more cultural significance. Another colour or material that has very stable cross-cultural meanings is gold. Those stable meanings are wealth, power, privilege, prestige and prosperity. For those of you in the know who know about the history of Age of Sigma and the end of the old world, you may have already started to pick up on some design decisions with that colour psychology which scream things that they didn't want to say. Color psychology isn't just about associations. They also have positive and negative traits. Could you go into some of those? How about the positive traits? Confident, success, optimistic, certainty and charisma. This is certainly what they wanted to portray with the Age of Sigma. It's not a hopeless world. Instead, it's a hopeful world. One where you can win, but only through sacrifice. Gold also has negative traits. And they are? Heartless, uncaring, dispassionate, untrusting and soulless. Those negative traits were the traits that were screamed at those fans of the old world who felt betrayed, along with Gold's associations of power, privilege and prestige. What these models screamed is, there's a new order and you're not part of it. Gold couldn't have been a better choice to upset people because after Warhammer Fantasy was taken down and replaced with Age of Sigma, Gold screams braggadociously that, hey, look at me, I'm the new best thing, accept it. Now there is blue in the color scheme, however, blue is both a stable and static color. So it doesn't actually add a lot to this conversation. We want to go back to gold for a minute. When it comes to painting gold, there are two prominent methods of painting it. True metallic metal and non-metallic metal. With true metallic metal, you're using metallic paints and you're using them in different shades to bring up the reflective level. And with non-metallic metal, you are basically creating the illusion of a metallic surface using gradients with just basic flat paints, base paints, if you will. The painters of non-metallic metal are known for a certain level of snobbery. I'm not trying to accuse anyone of anything, but that reputation is earned to a certain degree. So simply in material choice, you were creating yet another divide and a known one at that. Additionally, Games Workshop has a very specific way that they paint gold. The way that they do it or the way that they advertise that it should be done is by using a silver highlight. This is actually a pretty smart technique because when we take a look at hyper reality, we're not trying to recreate reality. We're trying to assimilate it. So the silver actually acts as the highest highlight to show the reflection from the sky. Unfortunately, because of this, this meant that it was more difficult to teach than other basic painting methods. Which makes it harder for people to get into this and get behind it. I think we've covered all that we can with this color choice. Shall we move on? Design. Design. 
When it comes to the mask, they are meant to be death masks. And in a lot of cultures, that's generally not seen as a good thing. Asian cultures, Native American cultures, as well as Aboriginal cultures in Australia generally feel that seeing the visage of the dead come back to life is not a good thing. So by creating this again with the Stormcast Eternals, it's not really helping their case. However, I actually really like their lore. The lore is that they have heroes from various cultures fighting for Sigma. Heroes taken from their final moments just before they perished. However, from the books that I read, that doesn't necessarily mean that these were good people and there was some more interesting characters that were taken. They're warriors of order, not warriors of good. If you'd like to learn more about Age of Sigma lore, we recommend the channel Hey Woa. He seems to have very good content when it comes to lore and general Age of Sigma content. Lore-wise, this helmet design is perfectly accurate, but it doesn't showcase the fact that these heroes come from different cultures. So they should have expanded more on this concept by giving different helmet options. This is especially important because the main identifying factor of the Stormcast Eternals are the helmets. So they should have expanded a bit on that. Another thing that people are upset about is the fact that the Stormcast Eternals are basically fantasy space marines. And if we take a look at within Warhammer subculture, there is death masks already. And this is expressed with the Sanguinary God. So they basically look like they stole from their own IP and revamped it fantasy style. And by the by, what color are the Sanguinary Guard? Gold, aren't they? Now we understand people who are looking to be offended will find reasons to be offended. So these options that we may suggest may have just increased agitation. However, like we showed at the very start of the video, we actually like the Stormcast Eternal design. Just not in that color scheme and not with that helmet, preferably both. My suggestion would be to have some of those more iconic helmets from the old world. Bretonian Knight helmets, Empire helmets, perhaps even a single helmet for the more esoteric areas such as Cathay and Nippon. This could have actually increased its economic viability. Why? Because people would want to collect those more rare helmets. Aside from that, the helmet designs could have acted as the new way of changing the chapter symbols rather than having the pauldrons changed like with the space marines. And this would have helped with eliminating the copycat element of space marines in fantasy element. And also, if they had brought back some of these old helmet designs from Warhammer Fantasy, it would have helped ease the anger that players felt when the game got discontinued. And it would have helped with transitioning them into Age of Sigma because there will be some familiar elements in it. In fact, if I am to understand correctly, I am not a strong Age of Sigma player, though I have Age of Sigma models. We're more painters than players. One of the best ways to use Stormcast Eternals is in a formation from Cities of Sigma where you have a combined force. If they had have done this at the start of Age of Sigma, you could have eased a lot of people from the old world into the new. Having themed Stormcast Eternal along with one of their older armies put on new revamped bases. Using some of the former heads from their older kits on these newer models and they would have felt more included. The best part of this is that Games Workshop can still do this. They could make community posts to say that you can use old world models alongside the Stormcast Eternals by making rules to use old world models Cities of Sigma style with Stormcast Eternals. Such as the Bretonians. Or they could do what we suggested by including parts of old world models with the Stormcast Eternals. They could also release head packs from the old world to show the different cultures that were from the old world. Or they could also release head packs to show showcase new cultures from the new world. These heads and helmet packs would be a great counter to the STL market. While the printing market will always have more variety than Games Workshop, what they will have an advantage with them is that they are official product. And yes, we do understand that there are bare heads for the Stormcast Eternal. They do not fit the niche which we are describing. 
think that covers everything we can. We wish you luck in your adventures in the old world, the world that was, or the Age of Sigma, wherever you may be battling. And we want you to join one more battle. What's that? Keep, Keep those brushes wet. Bye-bye. Sonny, I'm sure that no one will think that we just hate Games Workshop. No, I don't think... See, now everyone agrees with me. Okay. I don't think that's how it works, but I can see you want this one.